Okay, so what is an annuity? This is something that so many students really struggle to understand and I find myself explaining a million times a term. Okay, so with simple and compound interest, you are taking an amount of money, you're giving it to a bank. This is the bank. The bank is then either paying a simple amount of interest, which is just the same amount of money every month, or a compound amount of interest where it goes up because it's being compounded on more and more money each month. An annuity is something different. You take an amount of money and you give it to the bank. Then the bank spits out or doesn't spit out, but in the bank is now your money plus interest. That's a money symbol. Then you give the bank the same amount of money you gave them at the start. And then the following month, it's your money plus your old money plus more interest. So what you're doing is giving the bank the same amount of money within regular equal contributions. So the interest is compounding at the end of each period on a different and bigger amount of money. So compound interest, you're putting all the money at one go, you put $10,000 in, you get interest on $10,000, right? Annuities, you put in $1,000 in January, 1000 in February, 1000 in March. So yes, you're still putting in $10,000, but you're doing it slower. I'll show you how this looks like graphically or kind of it would on a graph, it would look like this. So this is um, the line for your compound interest, right? It'll slowly and slowly and slowly increase over time like this. An annuity is going to look like this. So you put in this amount of money and there's a bit of interest and then you put in this amount of money, bit of interest, this amount of money, bit of interest, this amount of money, bit of interest, same amount of money, bit of interest. It's going to continue to increase, 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 increase over time because you're putting in the same amount of money each time, but you're actually also earning interest on it. It's just going to be smaller and then bigger amounts. So with annuities, you can think of it as two separate arms. We have the future value of the annuity and the present value of the annuity. Now, they often ask you questions with these terms, but they don't massively change what you actually have to do with your questions. So the future value of an annuity is the total value of the investment at the end of the specified term. So the question will say something like, what is the future value if I put in $1 every year for eight years and there's a 4% interest rate? Let's say you put in $1 in the first year. At the end of the second year, you've got interest on that $1. You've put in a new dollar. So now you've got $2 and four cents of interest. Blah, 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 blah. Keep doing that. By the end of the eighth year, you'll have $9 and 214, which actually you would knock off the four. You'd have $9 and 21 cents. Okay, so to calculate the future value of an annuity, we use something called a table of future value interest factors. So these tables, when used correctly, are actually just so, so easy to answer questions. Like it's it's a one-step process. Find your, your number, times it by the annuity. You will never be asked to calculate the future value of an annuity without a table. We don't have to worry about learning the calculations. They're these, whoa, so many letters and numbers. I don't even want to look at that. Never going to learn it. Do not need to know it, just for understanding. Forget you even saw it. Okay, this is what you're actually going to be looking at. The table below shows the future value of an annuity with a contribution of $1. Use the table to calculate the future value of an annuity, which contributes $570 per month for six months at 18% compound annually. Or monthly, sorry, monthly. So you'll see that we have a table. This is the time period and this is the interest rate. So to solve these questions, we need to use the right figures. So we're asked to find the future value that is paid at $570 per month for six months, compounded 18% per annum, but monthly. So it's not 18% monthly, it's 18% per annum divided by 12 months. So to find the appropriate interest factor, we need to determine the rate of interest. And we do that by taking 18% Dividing it by 12 months and it's 1.5% per compounding period. So now we can actually complete the question. So with six periods at 1.5% um, per annum, this is actually on um, the wrong circle, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. Um, what you would do is if you had divided it by like two, 
right? Instead of by, or you had like your quarterly interest rate, you probably end up with 3%. But no, it's six time periods for 1.5% per annum. So your rate is 6.230. So now we can find the future value. It is literally this easy. 570 times 6.230. The future value of our annuity is $3,551.10. It is literally one equation, you guys. You find your value from the table, from the two intersecting lines, your period, your time period and your interest rate, and you times that by your annuity amount. It's so simple once you understand it. There is no fiddling around and timesing multiple times. It is one equation. Okay, what does this mean? This is including the annuity paid per period. So all six $570 installments. So we paid $570 six times plus the interest earned. So if the question said, hey, but what was the interest earned on the annuity, right? Not the actual total value of the annuity. You would find this future value. Then you would find how much was actually your money originally, which was 570 times six. So $3,420. And you would subtract that from the amount that you actually have earned, $3,551.10. So the, annu the annuity itself is mostly your money, but the bank has paid you $131.10. Okay, we're now going to take a look at some more questions. Using the future table below, determine the future value of an annuity um, of $2,500 per quarter at 16% per annum compounded quarterly for one year. Okay, so we have 16% per annum compounded quarterly. So 16% divided by four is going to be 4%. So we have our 4% interest rate and it's quarterly for one year, which is four times in the year. So 4.2465 and our annuity is 2,500. So 2,500 times 4.2465 is going to give us 10,616 dollars and 25 cents. So let's say we were actually asked, oh, what's the interest? We'd have to subtract our annuity that we paid. So 2,500 times four is 10,000. So we would subtract 10,000. So the actual interest that we've earned is $616.25. Okay, question two. Abby is saving to purchase a cello. She deposits $1,050 into an account at the end of each year for four years. The account pays interest of 8% per annum compounding annually. Use the table to calculate the value of Abby's investment at the end of four years and the interest Abby earns on her investment over the four years. Okay, so we've got $1,050. It's 8% per annum compounding annually, which means we don't actually have to do anything to our numbers, right? 8% for years. Our rate is 4.5061. We need to times that by 1,050. 4.5061 times 1050 equals 4731 and 41 cents. So the value of the investment at the end of four years is $4,731.41. The interest earned on the investment, we need to find out what is Abby's money originally. So 1050 times four is $4,200 and we need to subtract that from 473141 minus 4,200 and that would give us $531 and 41 cents like so. Okay, using the table provided, determine the present value of an annuity if $8,000 is contributed annually for three years at 12% per annum. Okay, so it is annually, again, 12% per annum for three years. Our rate is 2.40. So it's simply 8,000 times 2.40.
19,200. So I want to highlight two things about this question. Number one, it says present value, right? So it's actually the same thing, despite the fact it doesn't say future value. Um, the second thing is that $8,000 contributed annually for three years should be $24,000. Yet our answer is $19,200. Now, this is a fault of the question. This is not a fault of us, right? This question is designed to not really make sense, right? Like, how do you put it in three times, but you end up with less money than you started? 19,200. So don't worry too much if you're pretty certain the question is just kind of written poorly. Our answer is still correct. Okay. A table of future value interest factors for an annuity of $1 is shown. An annuity involves contributions of $12,000 per annum, which is per year, for five years. The interest rate is 4% per annum compounded annually. Our first question is to calculate the future value of this annuity. Okay. So it's five years annually. And the interest rate is 4%. So our interest, uh, our rate from our table is 5.4163. And we're going to times that by 12,000. So 5.4163 times 12,000. And that gives us an answer of $64,995. And 60 cents. Calculate the interest earned on this annuity. We need to find the amount that we contributed. So 12,000 times five, and that should give us 60,000. Yep. Yeah. And so all we have to do is subtract that from our previous answer $64,995.60. Sixty thousand is going to give us four thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and sixty cents worth of interest. OK, here's our final question for annuities. Calculate the present value of an annuity that would provide a future value of twenty five thousand dollars after four years at six percent per annum compounded annually. OK, so we've got a twenty five thousand dollars at four years, six percent annually. 6%, 4 years, 3.47. So we would do 25,000 times, um, oh, sorry, that's poorly written. We need to, this is a bit of a different question. We're asking to provide the future value of $25,000. So what we actually do here is do 25,000 divided by 3.47. And we get 72,000, sorry, $7,204.61. So this is the amount that we need to contribute every year for four years to get $25,000 at 6% per annum compounded annually. So if you're asked, oh, how do you find this future value using like what would the present amount need to be? That's when you divide by the rate, not times. Okay. Okay. How do you ace annuities? Draw all over your annuity table. Make sure that you're using, if it's a really big table, use like a ruler or like dotted lines to make sure that you're choosing the right intersecting value. Um, like it says there, use a ruler to make sure you're using the right number. You don't want to just choose the wrong value from the table and then like get the entire question wrong. Take your time working out the number of periods and rates. If you're changing the time period, you're more than likely changing the rate and vice versa. Always double check them both. If you're doing something to one, you're probably doing something to the other one as well. Okay.